Well, if I want to graph this, um, maybe that's what I, was I want to graph. There's a couple ways we could do this. One way, remember I told you guys, whenever you have an x and a y on the same side, we could use the x and y intercepts, right? Plug zero in for x and plug zero in for y. But when you notice that, when you notice, when you plug a zero in for x and y, you always get zero for the other value. So therefore, the x and y intercept for for both of um, both of your values are at zero, right? So that's going to be an issue for us. So our other way we can do this is put it into y equals mx plus b form, slope intercept form, and then determine what the slope is and the y intercept. So to do that, I need to get my y by itself. So I need to think, all right, what is happening to the y that's preventing it from being by itself? Well, I have a 3 halves x that's on that side, and that's a positive 3 half x, 3 halves x. So I need to get rid of that. So to do that, I'm going to subtract the 3 halves x. Essentially, that y is being added by that because that's a positive that's being added. So I'm going to subtract the 3 halves x on both sides. Therefore, that's now going to cancel to 0, and I'm left with y is less than or equal to, we'll just do negative 3 halves x plus 0. Now, we usually don't write 0, but I'm going to write 0 in there so you guys can see what our y-intercept is going to be. Remember, we always want to write it as y equals mx plus b. Well, do we need to write 0? No. But I wrote it in there so you guys can see that. What is our y-intercept? It's at 0, right? Because you can always write, if there's no number there, you can always write plus 0. It's not going to affect really what the graph. So you can say mx plus b, which is 0. So therefore, our slope is now going to be in negative 3 halves. So if I was going to graph this, my y-intercept is at 0. My slope, remember slope is you're changing your y over your change your x. So at this point, I need to go down three units and then over two, right? Because you could have, remember, at negative three halves, or you could have it equal to three over negative two. So I could go up three units, one, two, three, and to the left two. And what you guys notice is it doesn't matter if you go up and to the left or down and to the right, you're still going to have the exact same line. Then I look at it and I determine, is this going to be a solid or a dashed line? Remember, whenever it's less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, the equal to tells you that uh, our line is going to be a part of our solution. So it's going to be a solid line. Now, lastly, we need to determine our, where is our test, what our test point is. Now, I told you guys that always the easiest test point to pick was 0, 0, right? And here, uh, here's why 0, 0 will not work for this problem. So if I did test 0, 0, right? So I'll plug in 3 halves, negative 3 halves times 0, plus 0, less than or equal to 0. Well, I get less than or equal to 0, which is true, right? Well, so since that's true, it's on my line, though. Do I still shade above or below? We don't know, right? We need to pick a point that's either, that's either above it or below it. So what's probably the next you know, easiest solution? Well. I always like to put, I don't want to multiply by a fraction, so I would probably say the easiest next point to pick is any point for y, let's just pick a number for x. Or I'm sorry, let's just make x is 0. So let's pick the point um, 0, 3. Okay? So I'm going to test 0, 3. So 0, 3 is going to be right here. So I plug in 3 in for y is less than or equal to a negative 3 halves times 0. We don't need to write the 0. So 3 is less than or equal to 0. Is that true or false? False. False. Since this point's false, I'm going to make a nice big F, and I'm going to shade in the opposite direction. So that's telling me all the points that are now below the line are going to make my inequality true. Make sense? So if you guys get to your problems, the four problems I want you guys to do, you got to make sure you solve for your variable Y, and then that will help you solve the rest of it. Okay? Okay. Okay.